Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. I'd like to show you today uh, in this exclusive video um, how best to go about starting with ink blending. Now, if you've seen people blending colour combinations with distress inks and distress oxides and you've not yet taken the leap into doing it or if you've been trying and not been getting quite the results that you'd hoped for, hopefully this will have lots of tips and techniques that you can try out to get perfect ink blending every time. So there's a number of things to consider from the cardstock, the tools that we apply the ink with as well, the application technique and of course the colours that you're mixing and I'm going to cover all of those in this video. So let's start right from the beginning with the tools and the paper. Before we go on to that though, just to let you know that the surface that you're blending onto or putting your paper onto is important also and you'll see why in a little while but I would definitely suggest getting yourself either some blending mats, a piece of acetate or just a smooth reasonably shiny surface that you can easily rub your, your blending tools on. So whether it's your brush or whether it's your foam applicator, whichever you prefer to use, uh, just make sure that there's no friction when you're working on them. This will definitely help you out a bit later. So the paper, the cardstock, it needs to be smooth. It needs to not have any texture to it. Uh, you can blend into textured cardstock, of course, but you are going to get a non-perfect blend. You're going to have lumps and bumps in it. You're going to have missed spots. If you want that sort of effect, absolutely go ahead with textured. Otherwise, look for a smooth cardstock. Now, when it comes to tools, everyone has preferences. I prefer brushes now, but I always used to use the foam applicators, mainly because these were the only things that we had available to us uh, when the Distress Ink and Oxide ranges first started coming out. Um, and that's what we all used. So I've still got some um, foam blenders and I will show you the difference between the two. So just putting some of the ink onto my foam there, this grips onto the ink and I find you use a lot more this way as well um, but I'm going to then go onto my panel here and as you can see I'm actually getting and if I'm not careful I can get some really quite harsh lines here so this is just using a broken china so uh, if you accidentally kind of just accidentally press too far with the corner of your foam you're going to get these lines now Let's just take this with a brush blender, exactly the same colour, let's go with the same colour. I'm just picking up some onto my brush. The ink only really sits on the surface here as well. It doesn't soak all the way in the way it would with a foam, so that's why I feel that you actually end up using less ink and not wasting so much. But this way we do get a much smoother blend. So with brushes, because we're not picking up so much, we have the opportunity to build the colour up. Again, I'm working in circles in the same way as I just did with the foam, but you can see the difference between the two. And this is why my preference is the brushes. Now you can pick these up in lots of different craft stores, Amazon as well. Um, I'll link it in the description where I get mine from on Craft Stash, but there's a lot of variation in sizes, but essentially they all do a similar job. So now the more exciting part, let's talk about choosing your colours. Um, I've got a series on my YouTube channel that does take you through um, lots of different colour combinations with each individual Distress Oxide colour. Um, working through all the colours, so uh, do check that out. But if you're just new and you've just got a few colours and you're wondering how best to mix and match them so that they work as blended, blended colours, um, I would say first of all when you start stick with if you can one color but different shades of so pick your favorite color mine is a blue uh, and it's usually a teal sort of blue and work with those so I've got uncharted mariner broken china and speckled egg going from dark to light and you can do this with the numerous different uh, distress ink and oxide colors um, you can do this for every colour available, so pink, purple, orange, red, blue, green, yellow, you know, they all have different shades available. So I would always start with my darkest colour, and I'm going to pick some of this up and blend it into my cardstock here. Now if you're doing a larger area, the best thing to do is to get the largest brush you can, 
Um, if you're doing a smaller area, you can even get brushes as small as what they call stencil brushes. So really, really small, tiny blending brushes. So starting to go from one colour into another. And like I say, it's easier to start with three of the same colour but different shades to begin with. We will talk through in a moment how to jump from one colour to something totally different also in a moment. So blending in, first of all, your solid colour where you want it making sure to work round in circles. I'm not applying a lot of pressure. I'm just letting the brush sit on the surface of the paper, going round in circles to ensure that I've got a fully solid colour. If there's any sort of grain in the paper that every area, every edge of that grain is being caught with colour. Then I start working up and at this point, I'm not going to apply any more ink to my brush. I'm just working with what's already on there and I'm lightening the pressure more and more, still working in small circles. I'm, as you can see, I'm barely moving my hand. It's actually the actions at the wrist with the, with the um, little circles, and it really is minute, so it's, there's not a lot of stress on your hand at all. I'm going to keep that available to me. I'm not going to put it away yet, because very often I come back to my previous color. But then I'm going to go in with my second color, and I'm going to put this down where I'd like it solid first. Okay, I'm not going to start blending yet. I'm going to say, well, I'd like solid colour across the middle here. So again, working in circles. I am going to let this taper off in the same way as I did with the darker colour. So just using what's on my brush now and just doing little circles up towards where the third colour will be until that's almost faded out. Then I'm going to pick up some more and we're going to work at blending these two together. So I'm going to go along my solid line and just doing those small circles. And as long as you've not allowed your ink to dry between the two, you should start to see that the two just blend really, really nicely together. Like so. Now I've got a little space here on the edge that's a little bit paler. Hopefully you can see that. So I'm just going to use what's on my brush already. I'm going to come down onto the area where I've got solid colour. So I'm not going to be placing too much ink into my blended area. And I'm going to work up into that a little bit and then down into that with my other brush to blend it nicely. Now you will notice this area here is darker. That's because I've just applied fresh wet ink and this had already started drying. So you will get that sort of darker look, um, so to speak, if you're applying fresh ink back on top, but it will all dry in the same way. Now it's always a good idea between colors to wipe your mat. I'd suggest using a wet wipe to just lift off the colour because distress inks and distress oxides, they are water reactive so they clean up, off lovely with just plain water, but also to take a dry towel and wipe your mat. It's important you don't have any moisture on your blending mat as you work, otherwise it will react with the inks. So then we're going to come to the lightest colour and I've got speckled egg here. Again, we're going to pick up the ink and we're going to apply it first where we'd like the solid colour. I haven't left a lot of space here for my lighter colour, so I'm just going to work now. No, I'm not going to apply any more ink to my brush now. And I'm just going to do those small circles, working down into what was my second colour. And just keep an eye every now and then, just step back and make sure you're happy with the ratio of colours. So I've got much darker going into lighter and lighter again, uh, further towards the top. If you prefer your colours to be um, so they're equal, so a third of each, then make sure you concentrate on that as you're blending and don't go too far up with any one colour. Now I'm just wiping and drying my mat again because I'd like to go in with a bit more broken china. Again, apply first of all across the solid colour so you don't interfere with the blending you've already started. And then I'm just going to bring this up here. 
and make sure that I've got the lovely blend between the two and I do tend to do this quite a lot as well I do tend to go back to the previous color and work my way up so then there we've got the gorgeous Uncharted Mariner going into Broken China going into Speckled Egg and that's how I would get a lovely ombre blend but what if you didn't want to work with three uh, shades of the same colour as we just have with the blue? What if I wanted to go from Uncharted Mariner into something like Wild Honey, which are very, very different colours? Now, my suggestion for this would be to pick a middleman, a middle colour. Now, bearing in mind, this is a blue and this is kind of a yellow you're going to need a colour that sits well between the two, that works with both. So this orange yellow colour works really nicely with green, as does the blue. So the best way to think about this, if you're considering different colours, is think about the rainbow. And if you've got two colours, say I've got red and I've got yellow, which is a fairly simple um, example, so red and yellow both have orange between it that will work if i wanted to go from red into green i could go from red into orange yellow and green or i could go from red straight into yellow and then into green so they would work nicely already i know that placing red and green together wouldn't work it would cause a muddy color so you need to find a middleman a middle color that will work with both colors either side so we've got Uncharted Mariner, Peeled Paint and Wild Honey. So let's blend these three together in the same way as I just did with the blues and let's see what these look like. Now I've got one more tip for you if you're just beginning and that is to definitely try to get yourself in your stash a picket fence distress ink now this doesn't fall under the oxide range but it is very very similar and in fact i believe the white distress ink and the makeup of it is where the inspiration for the oxides came because it's both a dye and a pigment ink so what i'm going to do is i will show you how to create a gorgeous ombre effect but with just one color going into nothing if you're working on white cardstock so I'm going to place down some wild honey here and I'm going to take this up to uh, about a third or half of my page and then I'd like it to fade out into nothing for a nice background where I haven't had to think too much about different colors so as always I've got my solid color down there lots of circles to make sure the area is covered then with what's on my brush I'm just going to blend this up lightening it a little and it almost goes to nothing now I can leave it like that but I'd like it to have more of a seamless blend into the white and this is where my picket fence ink comes in so just again wiping and drying my mat really important and then let's take a clean blending brush or this is the one I use for my picket fence load it up and Although you won't see anything, I'm going to start applying Picket Fence ink to the other end of my cardstock in the same way I would if I was actually blending colours. And then as I get towards the blend line here, you'll notice it starts, you start picking up the yellow ink a little. And as you do that, work across the panel, across the page, small circles, and you can slowly start to lift up in towards that ink that white ink that you've just applied and that just gives you much more of a seamless blend between the yellow and the white it's absolutely beautiful and it just means like I say if you are struggling with picking different colors or if you just want one color a monochrome card of any color you can use this technique to still get those shades but just using the one oxide so thank you everybody i hope this has helped you with lots of tips and techniques 
for your Distress Ink or Distress Oxide blending. Like I say, do come and find me on YouTube, subscribe to my channel and check out the playlist for all the Distress Oxide colour combination videos as well to help you along. Thank you all and take care.